We've got this book out. Shall we fill some pages together? The very first prompt we've got is to create clouds. Look out your window and draw the clouds you see. Well, it just so happened that today is the clearest day that Britain has ever had, and there are literally no clouds in sight. So we're gonna have to make up some clouds. I'm using printer paper, and I think this is gonna be pretty difficult. We've got the alcohol markers out. I am new to alcohol markers. I don't know how to blend. And I don't think printer paper is gonna be very forgiving. I think it's gonna be similar to the lined paper that I use in the Daily Doodle Diary, but I have seen a lot of other people use printer paper in their Create This books, so we're gonna give it a try. Starting by drawing the shape of clouds. These are imaginary clouds, so it doesn't matter what they look like. Now rubbing out those lines with the end of this cheap pencil because I couldn't find an actual rubber. I'm still in the process of setting up my first art studio and I don't know where a lot of stuff is. Going straight in with a crazy colour, green, and I'm immediately realising that they're not going to look like clouds if they're completely random colours. The green is looking more like a hedge. The pink one is kind of cute though, right? But pink always is cute. I'm attempting to blend on this paper and it's unbelievably difficult. As I said, I've only used alcohol markers just a few times and this is my first time using them on printer paper. It acted weird. The Pens kind of spread across the paper and then dried immediately. Very strange. I'm trying my best to blend and failing. You know, everyone has to start somewhere. We're just going to ignore that. The yellow one is probably actually the best, so we've got a lot to get through. Blue is the most difficult because I actually don't have any light blue shades. We've got one light colour and the rest are pretty dark. There aren't really middle blue shades in this set. It was hard to pick a shade because none of them seemed right so that just did not blend in the slightest. I still think it's a pretty good starter set though it has a lot of really good pinks. The set that I got is down below with a 10% off voucher code. Now drawing in the hedges. I probably should have excluded green from this page let's be real but I figured I have a lot of light greens so that was the thought process for adding green. Nevertheless I don't think grass green was it. Maybe glass or bird or turquoise. A slightly fancier green might have looked nicer, but even then it's not helped me figure out how to blend. You can see I'm trying a slightly different method every single time to see if this cloud is the one where I figure it out. But nope. Maybe a really good blend is just kind of impossible on printer paper. Maybe I'm just expecting too much. But I mean this barely counts as a blend, right? The entire page pretty much failed. I'm reaching for a dark blue now and adding swirly lines over the entire thing to hide the really bad blend. This was a rash decision that was made in about five seconds, not even long enough to actually consider it. Really, it was an impulse and maybe a bad one at that. I probably shouldn't have done it. It looks a bit odd. I'm thinking the clouds needed some bolder edges, so using an even darker blue. Grabbing this Bosch knife because I'm now a homeowner and can't find a cute little craft knife, so naturally we're reaching for the proper stuff. That was difficult to use, so we're going for scissors instead. You can't go too wrong with scissors. I want the top of the clouds to be exposed to blend in with the page. I mean, I guess it worked because my partner was very confused when he saw this and couldn't work out how it was done with the same sheet of paper. Also, we need the prompt to show through. In future, there'll probably be loads of different ways that we do this. I'm now cutting little slices in the clouds for something very odd. We're drawing small little animals. Well, I guess a bee is an insect. We have no plan. We are drawing random animals from memory with no references as you can tell. I think cats are probably the easiest animal to draw without a reference. If you draw a generic cat, maybe something like the ones with little folded ears or Siamese would be quite difficult, but a generic house cat, they're okay to draw. Dogs on the other hand are a lot harder because there are so many different types and sizes. This dog is supposed to be like a Labrador retriever and it was really 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 hard. I mean the face 
face is okay, but the body went wrong. I can just about draw frogs because I've drawn so many frogs in the past. I don't know why there are so many in my sketchbook, to be honest. But the bee doesn't look right. It's looking odd. Maybe because the head is separate to the body, but I guess when you draw an animal, it can kind of look like anything. Grabbing the alcohol markers again, and I decided to use similar colors to make the piece cohesive, without realizing that if I use the exact same colors, it's just gonna completely disappear into the background, and it did. Well, I mean, I guess the dog kind of had to be yellow, but I don't know, we're going crazy. I don't know what's happening. I'm drawing little animals to sit in the clouds. Okay, okay. Reaching for that knife again and attempting to cut these tiny little animals, and it sliced my finger. Well, it wasn't even whilst I was cutting. It was when I moved it in my hand. It just happened so fast. So we're now going for an intermission to find a plaster and ruin the whole cute aesthetic. Back to the big scissors and cutting these tiny little animals. Do you know how difficult this was? I couldn't find the smaller scissors. Cutting out the rest of the animals and contemplating what I'm doing with my life. Just questioning if I am actually still an artist after this abomination. So I got up and reached for a painting that I literally made earlier on in the day just to remind myself that I can actually create decent art. Slicing the art in half now but it wasn't completely in half, it's a little bit wonky, that's fine. As long as there's some room at the edge I guess it's okay. This is the first time I've ever sliced art in half and I'm not a fan. Out of every chaotic decision we've made so far, this one is on top and apparently I might have to do it every single page. I also think I glued it a little bit close to the middle because now it bends funny. Finding those little slots again, we're sliding these random little animals in clouds in the sky where they are half in place but can also come out if needed. These are the emotional support animals that are on the first page and are gonna get me through completing this book. The hardest part for me will be trying to come up with ideas and not taking things too literally, which is actually the goal in the beginning of this book that I wrote down. A bee, a cat, a dog, and a frog they're gonna bring me the good ideas. And you know what? I think we achieved that goal today. We didn't take this too literally at all. The page is kind of cute, kind of awful. What do you think? Now we're gonna go back a little bit to the actual first page. That is probably something I should have done earlier, but I really wanted to get started with the first prompt. It's literally the first page when you open the book and the left side is blank. It's not actually attached. So we can use alcohol markers straight on the page. I wanted to draw some art supplies. That idea did not come to me at all on the front cover but like the words are in a splash of paint of course there should be paintbrushes how did I miss that I just went crazy with crazy things and forgot to actually draw some art supplies for a book of art we need some paintbrushes more splatters and a paint palette I'm using a black fine liner that's a really similar size to the printed splatter and honestly it almost looks like it's supposed to be there which is what I'm going for I want this spread to look like I'm just coloring in a color coloring page. And if I look at it a year later, I'm not gonna know if it's all printed or if I drew it. We're using alcohol markers since it doesn't really matter if it goes through the page. And picking out some nice pastel shades. The front cover is bold and bright, so we're picking out some neutral tones that aren't in the front cover at all really. I'm talking brown, yellow, grey and pastel pink. They're gonna be the background. And we're just adding random blobs over and over again to look like subtle splatters. It was actually relaxing, but took a lot longer than I thought it would. As you can see, it goes on for a really long while. There are some times when the blobs end up really small for some reason, and that goes on for a little while. But then I notice, and I'm like, no, I need to do big blobs. Race through, forget again, and we get small blobs. I don't know if that's relatable or not. Maybe it's just me. It was pretty fun though, and I love this background. I think it went really well because it kind of looks like paint blobs. Alcohol markers are cool because they do look a lot like watercolour. Like, if you don't have watercolour paint or you don't like actually using paint, I can understand why you might really like alcohol markers because they look very similar to watercolour, but they're super handy because they are in a pen and you don't need water or paint brushes. They're not messy like paint can be. They look similar without all that fuss. I can really understand why people like alcohol markers so much, especially for something like a daily art challenge. It's 
far easier to reach for a pen and quickly do a doodle or a drawing than it is to set everything up that you need to paint. Although actually, if that's something you struggle with, water brushes are really good. It makes painting a lot easier because all you need is the brush and the palette. Now again, we're on small blobs. Is this a thing? Have you ever done this? There is a little bit of a colour shift that I keep forgetting about. I sort of pretend to look at the swatch sheet and go, ah, this is pink and this is blue. And then I pick my colours and forget to look at those actual colours on the swatch sheet. Personally, it doesn't make much of a difference for me. I must admit, I'm not the kind of person that needs specific colours in a piece, especially in a book like this. If the colour doesn't match perfectly to what's on the lid, it's fine. Unless you're doing a place that you've been to or a person that you know or just skin tones Because you don't want to end up with an orange oompa loompa like I did first time But if we're just having fun, it really doesn't bother me if the colors aren't the same color I do think the pink and the brown ended up a little bit close once they dried They kind of blend together a little bit They looked quite different when they were wet and the gray was a bit odd because it's a warm gray and it looks like gray But then it kind of dries to this brown shade Shade, which I guess makes it a warm grey. I'm gonna say it now, I prefer this cover page to the actual cover page. It was inevitable because I actually put thought into this one. I drew out supplies that fit with what was already on there and I'm not rushing because we're using alcohol markers and they're not gonna dry fast like paint does. But I do think that if this was on the front cover it would be a lot more neutral and I like that mine is bright because I can see it from far away and it's quite easy to know what sketchbook that one is. Avoiding those colours that we used for the background, so it's going to have to be blue and green. Bright and dark colours that actually show up and are different values. Well, the paintbrushes are all pretty neutral dark tones, but the paint splatters need to stand out. They need to be bright, so that really only leaves us with blue and green. Although again, this isn't a very nice green. I have nice greens, this one isn't very nice. The brushes are grey, brown and dark blue if I want a little bit more colour. Though I had to cover up the mess I made before where I accidentally drew over the brush with the fine liner. The problem with making that kind of mistake is you need to go over with something that's just as dark as a literal black fine liner. So it has to basically be black. The other paint splatter colour that I chose is a dark kind of maroon shade. So the paint splatter colours are blue, green and dark red. Obviously we need to use these three colours to create the logo because these are the ones that caused the splatter. Red around the outside since it's dark it's the most bold and then we're going in and making a whole lot of mess i'm going around the outside of the words but maybe i should have drawn blobs or something instead just carried on with blobbing i mean i added yellow and yellow is not even one of the paint colors also kind of realized at this point that the free splatter colors do not go well together they don't complement or contrast but we have to commit i guess if they were actual paint splatters on a page they wouldn't complement anyway because the mess wouldn't have been planned. The paintbrushes would have just fallen over, which is what I'm telling myself. Force myself to add a little bit of green here and make the page more cohesive with a few random paint splatters around the palette of course. I like that the palette is white, obviously most watercolour palettes are white or grey, but in this instance I think it really pops being a different light value. As always with markers my desk is now an absolute mess because I know if I put the pen back after each use I'll end up grabbing the wrong one and I'll never find the same color again. And the page is complete! I prefer it to the cover page, do you? The colors are cohesive and I love the background, plus I really love how it actually ties in with what's already on there on the page, which the cover page doesn't do. We've got the emotional support animals to provide inspiration, and I can't wait to work through this entire book, it's gonna be a lot of fun. Thank you for joining me today, make sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss the next one and I'll see you on Sunday with a new video. Bye bye!